Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by for this very quick playthrough for this game, Squire for Hire. As you can see, it is a micro game, only 18 cards. Uh, think button shy wallet size game, only not button shy. <laughs> This was designed by John Merchant and published by Leitman Games. And the reason why I'm going to feature this game today is that it is available as an app right now as we speak. It should be dropping today on Android, iOS, and all those major devices. So um, I'm not much of an app guy, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, I love when I can get the physical game to the table and you know uh, go at it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate a very quick playthrough uh, of Squire for Hire. Um, and I'm going to uh, try to give you a little bit of picture in picture just to, you know, kind of give you a nice close up view of what we're doing here. So very, very simple game. It is a tile laying game. Um, the motif is that you are an adventurer and you are trying to uh, go off on quests and do whatever you got to do. And you got to fill your pack. Uh, your pack starts off in this one little um tile over here so you got your bow and arrow you got some coins and all that kind of stuff some junk slipped in there as well i'm going to be drafting cards from this um tab uh like little market uh, type thing over here um this is a series of adventures that are going to happen and they're going to set preconditions for how i place uh so if i draft uh, a guy over here i have to go and figure out where i'm going to put it depending on the prereq over here uh, and I'll explain that. That'll be really clear uh, once we um, just, it takes like a turn or two and then you'll get like 95% of the rules. Uh, so I am playing Tenderfoot. So Tenderfoot is, I guess, a thief. Uh, so yeah, there you go. A little thief. Thief's pupil. <laughs> Not exactly a uh, uh, world, world class thief over here. But um, it just basically gives me a power, which is um, I count for having one extra treasure whenever there is a precondition that comes along, and also I get some extra scoring. So we're just going to set this to the side and begin to play through. So uh, that is really simple. Squire for hire, let's go. All right, so uh, over here, um, I begin with a quest. I've, I've set off, um, and the first thing that I've encountered is a group of bandits. So um, they have uh, trapped me, and they demand that I... Uh, go free. So I could, if I wanted to, assault them. So this is like a, a prereq, right? So like if I had weapons in my pack, um, I could just take one of these and place it freely. Um, or if I didn't have a weapon that comprised two total squares, then I would have to bribe them, uh, which means that I would have to cover one of the treasures on the um, map over here. So if you go back to my uh, map, this bow and arrow over here will be an example of a weapon. Uh, this coin over here would be an example of a valuable. Either I have the two squares or I cover the valuable. So a little bit thematic. You can imagine like you either have to fight them or you have to bribe them to get out. Um, good thing I have my trusty bow and arrow because I, uh, that means that I can I fulfill the precondition. I don't have to cover anything important. All right, so I think my turn is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to take this card over here. And I'm going to place it there. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I cover junk. Junk is minus one point when I add up my tableau. And the second reason is I get, um, you look at 10 to foot here, I get an extra point whenever I pair uh, coins and a ring. So I think that was a pretty easy placement. So that's my first round. And now I go ahead and I look again. Cool. All right, so now I have gotten past the goblins and I'm in a dungeon. Your party ventures into a power so powerful sorcerer's lair. Their illusions can lead you to dangerous traps unless you have magic to fend for yourself. Okay, it uh, looks like I am a martial character at this point. I don't have any chance at having the magic necessary. And, and if you want to look at the magic point, it's right here in the, in the market. So if I had, if this was in my main tableau, I wouldn't have a problem. I also do not have a potion, so this would have to be in my uh, main area. So um, what that means is that I have to just kind of uh, pass turn uh, and not take a card. So, I mean, <laughs> that's an unfortunate thing. Uh, I mean, you don't get, it is not devastating, but it's just a, a lost chance to score. So I have to flip the next card and see what it says. All right, the next one is Encounter. A magical barrier sees off a hidden tomb ahead. You may be able to dispel it, but I have to destroy one of my magic items. 
So this is a mandatory cost of I can't avoid spending that. And I do have the magic over here. I have two squares worth of scroll and I'm going to use my scroll or have to cover my scroll uh, with one of the cards that I draft over here. All right, I think I'm gonna choose this guy for a couple of reasons. It has that potion just in case I need to, you know, have a potion for a future um, adventure. And it also has um, a guard. That's not wonderful because uh, I already have like a big, uh, we a big uh, defensive thing. That's what I want to say over here. I know I have to cover this. There's no real great place um, to put this. So I'm just going to be putting that right there and move on. Okay. All right. I um, have gotten past that and now I'm at the dark. Uh, after defeat a fearsome darkman and take his hoard of loot, a uh, raven-like creature can be distracted by throwing coins. Uh, another situation where uh, it's going to ask me to fight my way out, a good thing I have my trusty bow and arrow, and I paired it with a dagger, so I completely, <laughs> I completely have the prerequisite to be able to do my thing over here. So this is what I'm going to do. I think this is another pretty easy call. I'm, I'm not playing like completely optimally over here um, because it's a playthrough, um, but I'm going to do the best that I can. But I do know that I want this coin. Uh, and I want to pair the coin with the ring over here. Okay, so that um, so this is something that I really want to do, but I want to note that this is an illegal placement because I need to be able to place a good item on the card. I can't just like place an empty spot on an empty spot. I have to be able to place uh, something good, which means um, the way this card is laid out, I'm going to be covering up something good. Hmm. Okay, so I've chosen to lay it over here. Um, I don't get this adjacency over here, but what I do get is the adjacency over here. Anytime you, you pair like items, you get an extra point. So at least I salvage that turn a little bit. All right, on to the next turn. I'm in a dungeon. Funding is needed to pay for a group of mercenaries to protect the town from invading skeleton army. Uh, do I have enough money to pay them in my pack? Uh, I need three. So um, let me go straighten that out over here. Okay, I do need three coins, uh, three spaces worth of coins, and I do happen to have that. So I have like one, two, three, four, so I have plenty. And Tenderfoot would have given me plus one, so that's five. Got plenty of valuables. I don't have to cover up one of my valuables. All right, so this is another somewhat no-brainer. I hope I can place this successfully. Uh, this card has a treasure chest, which is keys off of my character, so I just need to find a good place for it. All right, I've adjusted the camera for um, optimal placement as my little tableau grows. I'm going to put my treasure chest here. Um, I'm going to be able to get an adjacency bonus over there, and I've also covered up one of the swords, which is junk. Uh, my tenderfoot can actually um, turn some of the junk if I get enough particular um, thing. So if I get four of these broken swords, he would actually turn it into a point. But you can't do everything. <laughs> I'm just going to cover that and, uh, you know, just keep track of the different junks that I have. So I have one of, like, each piece of junk. So see what happens. All right, I have gone off on a quest. I trigger a trap in some old ruins. Poison arrows fly my way. Uh, do I have some armor? Yes, I have plenty of armor. Chink, chink. <laughs> So I do not need to spend a magic in order to proceed. All right, so I've made my decision. I'm going to take a um, card, put it there. Uh, a part of a good item landed on a card, so I'm good on the placement. And I have created an adjacency, so I have two more uh, points over there, and I have some useful items. Don't like the state of my junk right now because I have a lot of junk showing, but um, I think we can deal with that. Let's uh, figure out, let's go on to the next turn. All right, on to the next turn, Encounter. You come across a wounded traveler. He agrees to give you his precious loot if you give him a healing potion. Um, too bad I can't roleplay this out. I think I've uh, loaded for bear and I don't have to take any of his guff, but <laughs> it's just telling me that I have to give up one potion. So I have two potions on my board, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
And this has actually worked out pretty good for me. I get to place that right there. I get to cover up a piece of junk and the potion that I need to. And I also placed my chest near a coin, which is gonna be some extra points. Beautiful, worked out great. Okay. Encounter. You can come across you come across a traveling merchant with various goods looking for trade. They will only accept the trade of items, not coin or junk. So I have to give him something good. <laughs> He's not gonna take my crap. He has to uh, I have to give him something good. I think I can work that out. Let's see. There we go. So what I end up giving him was my third knife over here. It's not attached to these two. Uh, so I don't, I'm, I'm thinking I'm pretty good giving it up. And I also covered two of the junk, which uh, very, very cool. I'm glad I was able to pull that one off. Um, I don't, I've tried to get these two adjacent, but he can't have everything. Uh, but I do have the coins adjacent to the chest, which is exactly what I want. Next turn. Dungeon! Your party comes across ruins filled with swinging blades. Choo, choo, choo. Wear your best protective gear. This is just like the dungeon with the poison traps. Man, I keep on uh, falling into the, um, uh, some dangerous places over here. Uh, so this is the prerequisite. Have three armor. I have plenty of armor. <laughs> chink, chink. So as you see, uh, the, the more you go through the dungeon, uh, you're going to feel filled with the prereqs about you know, halfway through the game, if not sooner. Um, so, you know, it's basically um, try to get to the early part of the game without spending as much stuff um, as the game will want you to. Okay, I'm going to take this one. Uh, I'm, at this point, I'm really just kind of looking for coins. Uh, so I'm definitely hunting down those coins, and I'm going to try to maximize the placements. Uh, that doesn't always work out, but we'll see. Well... Uh, I should probably arc up the camera just a little bit to show you what I'm talking about. There you go. Uh, there you go. So I'm trying to match up that. I, I really wanted to kind of cover this, but I don't think I can match this and this and um, get the agency bonus for the coin. Unless I do some real covering, so I don't think I'm going to be doing that. So we're just going to go down. Let's go refocus the camera down. There you go. Put it... Cover some more junk. <laughs> well, it looks like I got just about everything. I may have cut off a little bit of that glasses over there, but you can tell what that is. All right. So encounter. You've dropped your hero's weapon into a chasm. Leave the weapon behind. No. Good thing I am bristling with weapons at this point. <laughs> that is perfectly fine by me. All right. Um, so there is one thing to note. Uh, so I'm going to take this one again. Uh, I kind of have an eagle eye for treasure over here. Um, I can't partially cover if I really wanted to. I can't partially cover this weapon. If I'm going to um, cover it, I have to cover it entirely like that. That's not an optimal placement, but I just wanted to illustrate what I would need to do if I pick this weapon to cover. So not covering any junk this way, but... I think I'm okay. Um, so that did a couple things. First of all, I created an adjacency over here, which is uh, what my character wants. I covered up um, the weapon that I needed to, which was this bow, my original bow. Oh no! Uh, but it wasn't adjacent to anything, so it wasn't like it's basically just sacrificing a point. And I have a third um, torch. I'm gonna try to mill the deck and uh, look out for that fourth torch to turn these negative points into a positive. Okay. Encounter! Any noise will alert the guards to attempt to steal goods. I thought I was doing good over here. What am I stealing from? <laughs> uh, but apparently I'm making too much noise, so I'm going to be uh, have to drop something in order to stop clicking around. All right. So, once again, I am treasure hunting. All right. To me, this is kind of an easy call. Uh, there is covering a... The covering the defensive item that I need and creating another, yet another adjacency to the uh, treasure chest. Uh, so I, I basically decided I'm going to go whole hog into Tenderfoot's uh, little adjacency bonus with the treasure chest and the coins. See how that works out. 
And that, my friends, is the end of the game. The story deck is over. Uh, this is my tableau. But let's count up some scores. All right, so uh, I'm going to add up the score, and I'm going to use this nice um, scoring guide as a four-point scoring system, and I just run down a list and see if I break 25 points. Uh, I'm hired <laughs> if I do. All right, so the first uh, scoring category is every glowing piece of equipment, uh, weapon, valuable, potion, that kind of thing. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So I got points um, just uh, from you know seeing uh, items right there. So uh, I think I'm looking pretty good, but we'll see how much junk um, takes away from my score. So I have 26 points. Uh, that's 27 points for the adjacency. Uh, that is unfortunate. <laughs> That I only got one point worth for adjacency. That's pretty pathetic, but what are you going to do? Uh, oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. There's another point. Oh, that's two points. Uh, so I've got the, these two and these two. So that is uh, 28 points. Okay. So then uh, X points for adjacency, uh, depending on my 10 foot card. I think I did real good over here. Um, so that's one point. That's two points. Four, six, eight, ten. So that's 38 points so far. Um, so I'm looking real good. So let's subtract um, all of the junk. And I did not trigger Tenderfoot's discount on junk because I I have um, I think I most I have is three of each indiv individual piece of junk. So I have 38 points: 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. Oh, 26 points! I'm barely hired. <laughs> <laughs> I am barely hired, uh, but I did manage to successfully complete a game of Squire for Hire. So if you like what you saw, um, go ahead and give that app a look. Uh, as you can see, you know, I, I read all the flavor text and I was talking through my uh, strategy over here, but you know, so that the uh, playthrough took a little bit longer uh, than a regular game will take for you. Your game will take about five minutes. <laughs> um, very repeatable, uh, um, pretty fun time as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed that shelf story. This is Jason reminding you that if you can change your mind, you can change the world. So until next time, later, everybody.